one who has managed to log in this uh, evening. Uh, we are on the module of uh, hospital infrastructure, and basically we are looking at um, we are looking at hospital maintenance and repair. So when you look at hospital maintenance and repair, we actually need to understand what do we need to maintain and what do we need to repair in the hospital. So on our introduction, uh, we said that hospital maintenance and repair are critical components uh, of healthcare facility management. So maintaining and repairing the equipments and different other infrastructures within the hospital are very crucial for the service provision in our hospitals. So basically, uh, this presentation is going to explore the key aspects of uh, maintaining a safe and functional healthcare environment. So we need a safe, functional healthcare environment for us to provide our healthcare services. So as a hospital maintenance technician, uh, he's supposed to actually have to do routine maintenance uh, duties for the buildings, including the carpentry, plumbing and other basic electrical issues that it needs to handle within the hospital. So uh, the hospital maintenance and repair is uh, not something small, but is basically holding each and everything that supports the service provision, including the infrastructure. So hospital maintenance planning, uh, we really know that in everything that you're supposed to do or that you're going to do, you need to plan for it. So even the hospital maintenance uh, there is planning on how you're going to maintain uh, the different uh, infrastructures and the different uh, equipments and other systems within the hospital. So hospital maintenance planning, uh, effective uh, maintenance actually begins with strategic planning. So when you want to have an effective maintenance of your different um, equipments, different uh, systems in the hospital, then you have to have a strategic plan. So this may involve assessing the hospital's infrastructure, equipment and systems to create a maintenance schedule, and then you have to prioritize the tasks. So when you assess, uh, you're going to create a schedule that will help you prioritize uh, what you're going to do in the maintenance and the repair of your different uh, systems, different infrastructures uh, in relation to uh, the hospital uh, service provision. So planning helps uh, in to prevent unexpected breakdowns and it also ensures the facility operates smoothly. So when you plan, you're going to actually prioritize and when you prioritize, you're going to make a schedule on how you're going to handle the different tasks on maintaining and repairing of those various uh, infrastructures and equipments that you have in your facility. And when you're doing that, actually to help you to prevent unexpected breakdowns of the different uh, equipments and systems, which will also help you to ensure that there is a smooth operation of different uh, services that are provided in your health uh, facility. And in this, we have uh, some of the organization in relation to hospital maintenance. And in this, uh, we mean that uh, structuring maintenance teams is also crucial. So in the hospital, we have uh, teams that help us to actually do these uh, services of maintaining and repairing our different uh, systems, infrastructures, and equipments. So structuring maintenance, uh, basically looking at uh, the hospital choosing either the in-house maintenance teams or the outsourcing services. So when you talk about the in-house maintenance teams, this means that uh, this is going to be done by the, uh, the employed uh, technicians or the engineers within the health facility or within the hospital. But when you look at the outsourcing services, that means you're going to look uh, for uh, the different specialities or different engineers outside the hospital. So you can also combine, depending on what you are going to maintain or what you're going to repair. You can have both the, ma the in-house maintenance teams and also the outside sourcing services so that you can be able to do this uh, depending on um, the other factors are like budgeting. Uh, maybe your budget is able to actually accommodate both. Then you can be able to actually utilize both the in-house maintenance teams and then outsourcing services. But also facility size is one of the factors that can make you decide to use 
uh, the different organization, whether the in-house maintenance teams or the outsourcing services. In case uh, the facility is big, then that means they have a bigger infrastructure that may need a bigger team to actually offer this service of maintenance and repair. If you have uh, very many equipments that need to be maintained, then also you may have actually to uh, outsource uh, for services. So facility size also will dictate on what you are going to use on the relationship of the organization uh, maintenance. Then the other thing is about specialization uh, that might be required. So we have different equipments and those different equipments may need different uh, specialities on how they are supposed to be actually maintained or how they are supposed to be uh, repaired. So the choice depends on those factors, the budget that you have on maintenance and repair of your infrastructure, uh, systems and um, equipments. Then also it will look at your facility size, uh, depending on the size of your facility, that will also guide you on which kind of uh, uh, choice of uh, people you're going to use. And the specialization that is required also will have to dictate on what you are going to use as either the in-house maintenance, if they have the skills, or the outsourcing services, if you don't have the skills to actually do that within your hospital. And in this, uh, hospital maintenance also has uh, methods uh, or strategies that we use um, actually in maintaining our different equipments and repairing them. So the hospitals employ various maintenance strategies or different our uh, maintenance methods and one of them is preventive stroke planned maintenance so this basically we are going to explain the next coming slides to understand that when you look at our uh, maintenance strategies and we talk about preventive stroke planned uh, maintenance what does it mean then we have predictive uh, maintenance that one is also one of the methods or one of the maintenance strategies that most hospitals apply in maintaining and repairing their equipments infrastructures and systems then corrective maintenance is another one so there are basically uh, three different types of maintenance strategies or maintenance methods that hospitals actually uh, uh, use or what they implement during the process of maintenance and repair of their different uh, equipments and systems. And when I talk about systems, you realize that the systems are basically the electrical system uh, because we need electricity. We talk about the plumbing systems and then we talk about our uh, water system which is more of plumbing and then we talk about the hvsc systems all that is supposed to be maintained in the hospital so when you have the water system or the plumbing system then we need plumbers and those are people who are helping us to actually maintain and see that um the, the water plant within the hospital or the water system within the hospital is maintained and there is adequate supply of water within the hospital so that we can be able to continuously provide our healthcare services to our clients adequately. So our uh, hospital maintenance tools and techniques, we also have different maintenance tools and techniques that we use in order to actually help us uh, do the services of maintenance and repair of our different uh, equipments and systems. So modern maintenance relies on advanced tools and techniques. Uh, for example, uh, they include the following computerized maintenance management system. Here they just use a computerized kind of tool that is able to show that maybe they could down tool or a technique in whereby the technicians or the uh, the engineer is able to see the condition of the different uh, equipments, the condition of the different infrastructures or the systems, and they are able to understand that this system needs to be repaired in relation to its condition. So they use condition-based monitoring tool or technique in order to identify or help them in uh, maintenance and repair of the different uh, systems. Then we have remote diagnostics. When you look at the word remote diagnostics, it looks like uh, it means something that is done from a distance. 
So uh, this is uh, basically a uh, maintenance whereby the person detects and diagnoses the problem with the equipment and the systems from a remote location. He's very far from the hospital, but he's able to understand the problem which might have happened with the machine when you explain to him and without having uh, actually to be physically present in the hospital. So this is what they call remote diagnostics. So they are able to understand when they are somewhere they are able to detect they are able to tell that this has happened to that machine and it needs to be repaired in this way so those are some of the kinds of uh, maintenance tools and techniques then predictive analytics uh, predictive analytics as i refer back to the previous slide we talked about the different methods the different strategies that we apply in predicting i mean in maintaining our tools and repairing them at the different systems and the the different systems and the different uh, infrastructures and equipments we talked about one method being predictive um strategy or predictive method so uh, this predictive uh, analytics is in relation to that predictive maintenance uh, strategy or predictive maintenance uh, method which we talked about in the previous slide and i remember promising that we are going to tackle it and understand them more in the following slides so uh hospital maintenance documentation in everything that you do uh, actually you have to prove that you have done and there are Therefore, there should be a documentation that should actually tell you or tell any other person that this uh, has been done. So there is a, a parable that they say that anything that is not documented is actually not done. So proper record keeping is very vital in hospital maintenance and the repair of different systems, equipments, and other uh, infrastructures. So maintenance teams must actually document all activities, including work orders, inspection reports, and equipment manuals. So this documentation helps uh, us to track maintenance history and compliance with uh, regulations on how these uh, infrastructures, these systems, uh, these uh, equipments are supposed to be actually maintained or repaired. So what we mean here is that when you are actually repairing the equipment, you have to fill in some document to show what uh, you actually did in the equipment during the repair. Was it maintenance? Was it repair? And if it was a repair, what was the problem? So uh, this is all supposed to be documented so that in case of anything, any other person can refer to that document and they may understand the problem, they understand what was done, and maybe if there is need to do any other thing further, it can be done because they will keep referring in your documentation. So we need to have a hospital maintenance uh, documentation in order for other uh, teams to follow. And we mentioned about uh, in-house um, in house maintenance teams. Those are basically within the hospital who are either employed as your engineers of the hospital. And you can also use the outsourcing uh, services whereby you may need some specialist kind of skills and you end up actually employing those who are out of your hospital and they are able to actually do you something in order to repair the equipments or the infrastructures so there are regulations and that's why we always have logbooks in all those different equipments that helps us actually to understand or to know how to operate some of those uh, machines and those can be the equipment manuals and we need them so that they can guide other staffs on how to operate the different machines when they are providing services in relation to those machines or equipments. So as I promised that we are going to talk about um, the different methods or the different strategies in relation to hospital maintenance. So one of it was uh, preventive maintenance and when we look at this preventive maintenance it's actually a method or it is a strategy in which hospitals use actually to maintain and to repair their equipments so regular inspections are supposed to be done during this preventive uh, maintenance method or strategy we need to service our equipments and when we service them we are actually able to prevent them from breaking down we are able to extend their lifespan and we are able to actually extend also its functioning and to help us to provide our services efficiently so basically what this means is regular inspections servicing and upkeep 
are essential to extend equipment lifespan and prevent unexpected failures. So when we don't do preventive maintenance, then our equipments are going to fail us and we shall always not be able to provide the services. So preventive maintenance reduces downtime. Downtime is when the machine has broken down and you're not able to use it. And it ensures equipment reliability. So when you do preventive, you're going to prevent it from breaking down. So our machine will be reliable, providing our services at regular function or safety tests and making sure that any problems are actually picked up before they cause a breakdown. So in this, you're able to actually do a lot in the maintenance of prevention. So when you're pre preventing something from getting worse or from breaking down, then you're going to be cleaning that machine. You're going to make sure that you're checking it. It's a safety. You're going to make sure that you're able at that time of testing, at that time of cleaning, you will be able to identify any other problem uh, before it breaks down and it can be addressed. That is what preventive maintenance is all about. You prevent your machines or your infrastructure or the systems from breaking down. So you can only do that when you're able to actually regularly uh, 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 try to inspect them and then make sure you service them and also do the cleaning. And you're able to actually sustain uh, the life of your um, machine. So this is recommended for most of the medical equipment and it will en enhance uh, their efficiency, effectiveness and reliability. And this must be actually carried out at an appropriate frequency as suggested by the manufacturer or its workload. So you realize that when you get these uh, equipment manuals, those manuals, when you read them, they're able actually to show us and guide us on uh, the periodic um, maintenance of these machines. So we don't take those manuals for granted, but we need to read them through. And when you read those manuals through, you're able to identify that this machine needs to work up to such kind of period of time, or it needs only to work for this kind of number of patients. And when you reach that number, they need to be serviced or they need to be actually um, either maintained. So uh, this is preventive maintenance, which will help us reduce uh, actually the breakdown of our machines and they will help to support efficiency and effectiveness, plus also the reliability of our machines in service provision. Uh, the other method or strategy in hospital maintenance is our predictive maintenance. So predictive maintenance, the word alone predictive, can just uh, try to give you an insight of what uh, this statement is going to tell us. So using data and technology, hospitals can predict when equipment will require maintenance. So this proactive approach actually minimizes unscheduled downtime and reduces maintenance costs. So predicting uh, is like you, you, you're foreseeing and you realize that with the data that you have in relation to the way this machine is supposed to operate and the technology of the machine, you get to understand that this equipment needs to be maintained. So there is that predictive kind of maintenance method or strategy. You just see how the machine is operating in relation to its data and then the technology of the machine itself can be able to help you understand what is happening with the machine and you're able actually to address that equipment or that system or that infrastructure and you're able to actually prevent it from uh, breaking down. So that is also another way of maintaining our equipments or infrastructure or our our systems in relation to this predictive maintenance method or predictive maintenance our strategy. So they just schedule it because if you don't, then you're going to make this machine actually break down, unscheduled breakdown because you didn't plan or you didn't know that it was going to break down, then suddenly it breaks down. So we have also to use this kind of uh, method in order to prevent our equipments and our systems from breaking down. And when they don't break down, then they'll reduce the costs of actually maintaining them. The other last uh, method, uh, basically there were three methods. You had that preventive and then the predictive 
and finally the third one is corrective uh, maintenance actually method or strategy so in corrective uh, maintenance uh, you look at the word corrective corrective actually can make you understand that to correct is when some, something has deviated from normal to abnormal so you need to correct it to bring it to the normal um the, to the to the normal uh, state so a corrective maintenance is a task that is actually performed to identify and rectify a fault on a break a broken down equipment machine or system to restore it to its original operational condition so for this corrective maintenance uh, you have to look at the machines that are already broken down because you failed actually to predict and then you failed to do the preventive maintenance so the machine ends up actually breaking down so when it breaks down then it is a task of the engineers and the different teams that will be responsible to actually identify why is this machine not working what has caused the breakdown and they're able to rectify that fault in order for the machine to get back to its original operational condition but it's very expensive uh, actually to do the corrective maintenance it's better you do the predictive and then also the preventive so that you don't end up with the broken uh, machines and you you end up uh, actually uh, providing the corrective maintenance services which can cost a lot of money for the hospital so immediate response to equipment failures or safety concerns is crucial so when these machines break down and you very well know that these machines help us in so many ways of handling our patients or providing services in the hospital so it's very very crucial that this should be handled immediately it happens so hospitals need to uh need to have a rapid and effective corrective maintenance plan to ensure patient safety and maintain operations so um when you realize these machines are broken down then the hospital uh, management has to actually do uh, the repairs uh, immediately so that they are able to do the effective correction and they are able to ensure that our patients are safe and also we have to maintain uh, the operations of the different uh, services in our hospital because uh, we need these machines we need these equipments we need these systems especially water and then the power and relation to the systems so we, we need them so that that we can be able this corrective maintenance is to be done then there should be rapid and effective um a plan and initiative to see that this is done very fast to, in order to save the lives of our patients so we want to look at the maintenance team's roles we talked about the teams are uh, different teams and we talked about the in service uh, or the in house uh, maintenance team and we talked about the out the outsourcing and those ones are the ones that are not within the hospital so the maintenance team comprises of various uh, roles uh, including the maintenance managers who are overseeing the entire maintenance program so in different hospitals you realize that we have different systems and we have the plumbing system we have the electric system and then we have um, the hvac system we have the communication systems and all other systems so uh, we need the team leaders or the managers in those different systems and their responsibility or their roles is basically to see that they oversee and they have to make sure that there is entire <coughs> maintenance uh, of these uh, systems so that we don't run short of the services that we are providing in relation to these systems The other uh, role of these uh, maintenance teams uh, is that the technicians who are responsible for hands-on maintenance tasks. So there are those different uh, technicians who are actually responsible to see to it that uh, they use their hands-on. For example, the plumbing. Plumbers are supposed to actually come and implement. They are supposed to do the work. 
not just to talk. So these technicians are responsible for hands-on maintenance tasks. So they need to come in and they do the work. Then the support staff assisting the documentation, parts of procurement, and scheduling the maintenance. So we also need the support staff uh, to help us in documenting whatever has been done, uh, what has been um, actually implemented, uh, what repairs have been done, and uh, what problem actually uh, happened so that the machine broke down so that we can be able to understand maybe how to operate this machine in case of this, this can happen and we are able to sustain its lifespan. So uh, the maintenance teams comprises of different roles. So these teams have their roles according to their different hierarchies. So when you look at the maintenance managers, for them, their work is just to oversee the entire maintenance program to see that it's able to actually repair or maintain the machine during the time of either servicing, inspecting, uh, cleaning, and so forth. Then the technicians are supposed to be responsible for doing the work itself. So their work is basically to address the issue, what has happened in the machine or what has happened the equipment or the system. Then the support staff, for them, they may not be able to actually put their hands on to do the work. They are not skilled, but their responsibility is uh, to see that they put everything that has been done uh, together so that we can have um, the documents. We can also do some procurement, and that is the procurement um, uh, department. They are supposed to ensure that they procure what is necessary for either the repair or the maintenance of the machine and also to schedule for the maintenance. Because in maintenance, we are supposed to prioritize. When you do the inspection of these machines, we are supposed to come up with, um, uh, with the suggestions and prioritizations on how we are supposed to do the maintenance. So that is in relation to the scheduling. Which machine is crucial? Which machine is doing uh, either bad if we delay to break down what are we going to start first and what shall we end with last so that is the scheduling of the maintenance they have to prioritize in different um aspects so that they can be able to avoid a uh, downtime of the different machines because when they break down we end up failing to provide at uh, the healthcare services so we talked about the in-house um in-house maintenance team and we talked about the outsourcing so we want to look at the outsourcing versus the in-house so outsourcing is the process of hiring a third party or outsourcing a company to do a specific task or function for your business so on the other hand outsourcing or in-house means bringing the task or function in-house and doing it yourself so what this statement means is uh, the outsourcing is basically maybe you have your engineers, you have your technicians inside the hospital, but they are not able actually to provide uh, the maintenance services or to repair the equipment. So what you're going to do, you're going to actually outsource. And outsourcing is to identify those who have the speciality, those specialist skills uh, of repairing that specific either equipment, or system then you're going to bring them to do the work or else you do it by yourself and that is the in-house whereby you yourselves within the hospital you have the skills to do it and you're able to do it so hospitals must either decide whether to maintain an in-house team or outs outsource maintenance services so it's you to decide and uh, previously when we had this slide above on relation to outsourcing and in-house uh, services. We talked about uh, different factors that contribute or can help you to decide what kind of uh, team you're going to use. Is it the in-house uh, team or the outsourcing uh, team? So we looked at budgeting, that you need to have a budget which can handle even the outsourcing. Because if you don't have that budget to handle the outsourcing uh, maintenance services, then you're not going to use the outside maintenance services. You may end up using the in-house, the very people you have within the hospital to provide those services for you to do the maintenance. Then also the other factor we looked at, which can either tell you to use the in-house team or the outsourcing maintenance, 
is uh, the, the size of your facility. So the size of the hospital also uh, matters. Then the speciality, the specialization, the skills to do the work can either dictate you to get the out uh, sourcing, maintenance, or the in-house team uh, services. Then uh, some of the considerations on what sourcing to consider include the cost, expertise, and the hospital's uh, unique needs. So I've already mentioned the other factors, and in addition to what I explained uh, when I was talking about uh, why we should either get the in-house or the outside maintenance, the other considerations that you need to look at is the cost, which is in relation to budgeting, expertise, which I mentioned, that is the specialization, and also the hospital unique needs. The hospital should be having some different kind of specialized services that may need um, very specialized equipments, infrastructures, and systems, and you end up actually doing the, out the outside uh, sourcing. So those are some of the factors that you need to consider in relation to what kind of uh, sourcing or what kind of uh, teams you're going to use in your maintenance uh, or repairs of the different equipments and systems in the hospital. Uh, so maintenance safety, what do we need to understand in this? Uh, during maintenance, we have to provide safety for both um, uh, the, the, the engineers, um, the people around who are using actually those uh, equipments or the infrastructures. So hospitals prioritize the safety of maintenance personnel. So those people who help us to repair these machines, who help us to actually maintain these equipments and the systems, we have to also prioritize and look at their safety. Because during that time of maintenance or repairs, some of them get accidents, they get actually injuries in relation to the process during that uh, maintenance activities. So this involves a strict adherence to safety protocols. So uh, in most cases, even during the time of uh, maintaining or repairing the infrastructures, we have different protocols that we are supposed to follow for safety. So they have to really adhere to them so that they can be able to be safe during the time of maintenance. Then providing appropriate personal protective equipments, they need to protect themselves. So when they are providing these services, you also have to consider their safety. So they need to pro put on those personal pro protective equipments to protect. Them. And the other thing is ongoing safety trainings uh, with some uh, trainings on and how to means are not understood by every uh, engineer or by every technician idea the best no or when you purchase help you to maintain or service this you may also try to let them train some other in-house a technician or in-house team member who can be able to jump in or who can be able to take up at the time when this uh, vendor ends up with maybe a specific period that he has agreed to help you uh, in maintaining the machine or to maintain the equipment or the system. So the maintenance contract should be negotiated at the time of purchase so that in case of anything, they are able to come and actually help you to work on the machine. Uh, for example, we had an autoclave and that autoclave, uh, not everyone was actually acquainted with the operation of that autoclave 
and when they brought it actually the vendor or the company that sold the autoclave had to send one of their engineers or technicians who came and took people through all the staffs who were working in that unit to know how the uh, the autoclave was operating you had to take people through the manual and uh, the operation manual of that autoclave and they had to leave their contact so that at the time when they are stuck and they do not know what to do they give a phone call and they are given instructions by the engineer of the company or the technician of the vendor who are sold at uh, that and were able actually to know what to do and operate even in the uh, absence of that technician because was able to direct and instruct and the people on what to do. So it is very important for these specialized and advanced equipments that you use this vendor or these are manufacturers to help you in the maintenance of these uh, equipment from this ESN on what to operate. So it is very important for us to learn from maintenance experiences as we keep maintaining these equipment. As we keep uh, repairing these equipments, we learn more. So the data that we get are uh, in relation to What very key in relation to the infrastructure and in relation to the systems, then you're able to analyze that data and you shall be able to improve on how you're going to handle your equipment. And by that, there's continuous improvement on maintenance and repair of your equipments because you've got the knowledge through the experience and through the data that you have collected and analyzed in relation to your uh, systems or uh, your infrastructure. So hospitals should use the feedback and lessons learned uh, to refrain uh, or to refrain uh, their maintenance processes. Actually, it's just takes like six months and you've not maintained, you've not cleaned it, you've not serviced it, it can easily break. So you can even adjust instead of taking six months, let's do the maintenance or let's do the uh, the cleaning of this equipment at least uh, within five month period of time. So by you doing that, you are actually doing the preventive maintenance. So your equipment is not going to looking at it for the maintenance that you have provided that will help you to promote continuous improvement in the um, hospital maintenance and reason uh, we know that maintenance record report format means we need to have the records and in the records, if you're handling one equipment or if you're handling one system, the following has to be noted or the following has to be documented. The reference ID number as per inventory. So the reference ID number is based also is very necessary we have to write the equipment name so after you've written the, the reference id number then you're supposed to also write the name of the equipment then after you also need to identify the manufacturer
it, the serial number is different from the reference number, meaning that you're going to have the reference ID number up uh, event tree and you're going to use a serial number of the same equipment. So you need to write the name of the equipment, you need to know the manufacturer of that equipment, the date when it was installed, when was the machine installed and then maintenance frequency for how long are you supposed to do the maintenance and basically we are looking at the preventive maintenance whereby you're going to do it in order to prevent your machine from actually breaking down so the frequency is also very necessary for you to document so that you can be able to follow up actually in the time of when you need to maintain this equipment before it gets uh, broken down. So the date of maintenance, when did you last uh, maintain this? Or oh, if you did the maintenance today, then you're supposed to note the date of today. That's when you did the maintenance. Then from here, you're supposed to know at what time again are you supposed to do the next maintenance so date for the next maintenance is also supposed to be calculated after you've got the date of the maintenance of either today uh today this date uh, you've maintained the machine so if it is for six months when is the next uh, date for maintenance so that should also be noted in the records of which i mean in the documents uh, of uh, maintenance then the cost of maintenance and details you are supposed to write the cost you need to actually specify what was the cost of maintaining that machine or that system so you write all the details either you're going to buy a spare part or uh, there was actually just doing the cleaning whatever was done you need to write and whatever it costed you need to document so that those details are taken note of and in case uh, this machine may be broke down, you realize that the cost of maintenance will be high because you're able, uh, actually you decided to buy a new uh, either spare part, which costed you a lot of money. And by you writing this down and noting the cost of maintenance and the details, it may also help you to prevent uh, the next um, breakdown by actually following uh, the date for the next maintenance so that you can prevent uh, the breakdown so remarks on functional status have also to be documented so after you have actually done the maintenance you have to put the remarks of functional status how is the machine you have worked on the equipment you have worked on the on the on the uh, systems so what is the functionality at what state is it is the machine or the system now functioning or it has failed or it is functioning but not in the normal uh, state or condition that it was actually uh, manufactured. So all this needs to be captured so that um, when the next team comes, they are able to refer to this and they are able to know this is the very machine that was repaired and was such and such a manufacturer who made this machine. It was installed on such and such a date, so it has worked for such a period of time. And then the maintenance frequencies after either three months or six months, that is the time that you are supposed to do the maintenance. Then it was last maintained in such and such a date or period of time then the date for the next maintenance is either due or you still have some time then how much did it cost for those who maintained and the details will also have to specify what happened what transpired what uh, were the costs for in that time of maintenance then the remarks have to also come up clearly whether the machine is functioning whether the system is functioning, whether the infrastructure is in it, its good condition and functioning, all that has to be brought up. So uh, documentation is very good, and this will help us in continuous improvement of our hospital maintenance and repairs. Actually, uh, this is the end of our lecture for this evening, and thank you very much. That ends our topic of today, hospital maintenance and repairs. So uh, we need to see that we follow the right procedures, the right protocols in repairing our machines, in repairing our systems and our equipment so that we can have continuous improvement and we shall be having continuous provision of services to our clients and whatever service that we provide should be of quality and of standard so that our patients will appreciate and our patients shall be satisfied 
with the services that we offer in our hospital. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for attending the lecture. And I wish you a blessed evening. Bye-bye. Uh,